welcome to News Kids Can Use, the show about all the weird, wacky, and straight-up strange things that have been making your grown-ups freak out about the news lately. I'm Tori Ogawa. I'm Emin Rogers, and we have a couple of headlines for you, a check-in with our favorite teenage pilot, and a very special guest. So let's get down to it. The UN's big climate change conference has kicked off in Glasgow this weekend. COP26, Conference of the Parties 26, so the 26th annual, is expected to make big strides in helping us meet the coming and already here climate crisis. There are already protests around this and people are really worried around this conference because they say that the politicians who are attending are really not planning to do anything about this. They just want to make promises that sound good about it. So young activists have been protesting all over the city. Greta Thunberg is there. And I saw one very funny protest that had the hot air band where everybody was wearing kilts and masks of world leaders. And that's on top of the challenges that were already there, which included the fact that many big nations who contribute a lot to global emissions haven't made any promises at all or haven't made significant promises to decrease their emissions. Other countries have made promises that people just aren't sure they can meet. India has said they will become zero emissions in the next several decades, which is a really big goal for a country of so many people that has only just barely started down their emissions cutting back journey. Our next headline is about a royal family and a royal wedding. Princess Mako of Japan's imperial family recently got married at the end of October to a man who is known as a commoner or not a member of the imperial family. Now, imperial household law decrees that imperial daughters are ineligible to be in line for the throne. So that means they can't become the leader or ruler. Um, And when they marry, usually to a commoner because there aren't many men in their family to begin with, um, they are demoted to that status and are now called a commoner. So she doesn't get to be a princess anymore, sadly. And unfortunately for the family, this means that their family is getting smaller as they keep cutting daughters out of their family and puts a lot of pressure on Mako's younger brother, who's 15 years old right now, to keep the family line going. So congratulations to Princess Mako for getting married, but really unfortunate that she's not a princess anymore. Although maybe with the situation it sounds like that family's in, maybe it's just nice not to be a princess anymore. You can just go have a normal, nice life. That's true. She does have a lot more rights and freedoms and ability to go do things she probably didn't get to do as a royal. So I feel bad for her brother, though. (laughs) We are bringing back a segment that we've once done. Where in the world is Zara Rutherford? Zara Rutherford is a 19-year-old Belgian pilot. She's looking to become the youngest woman to fly solo around the world. And it seems like she's going to make it, but she has run into some issues lately. So for about a month there, she was stuck in Nome, Alaska, because the weather was so bad and also cold that she couldn't cross the Bering Sea. It just wasn't going to be safe. She might, you know, crash and then freeze and then it'd be terrible. But she has made it to Russia at the time of this recording. So we're hoping that the temperatures there and the weather allows her to keep moving on and go Zara. On today's big deal, we are talking news literacy, and we have a special guest with us here today from Australia who knows a little bit more about news literacy than we do. So could you please tell us your name, your pronouns, and what you do? Hi, my name is Burton Huen. Um, My pronouns are he, him. I am a journalist and a social producer for Guardian Australia, and my job involves translating Guardian journalism into multimedia posts for social media that are more accessible and easy, easier to understand for a wider audience. And Guardian journalism is quite unique because the Guardian isn't owned by any company. It's not owned by any shareholders or any um, CEOs. The Guardian is owned by trust and therefore we have the ability to be very independent and fearless with our reporting. And that means Guardian journalism scrutinizes power, looks at how power and money interacts in our politics and has a commitment to look at what is best for the livelihoods of ordinary people. That is very cool. I didn't know that about Guardian Journalism in Australia. Yeah. So in your professional experience, have you seen an increase in bad information or news reporting? And are people believing those untrue things easier or faster nowadays? 
I definitely have seen an increase in bad information in the news. And I see a lot of that come from social media because it has made spreading information a lot easier. There are a lot of programs out there that can allow ordinary people to make their content seem very sophisticated and very professional. And that often gives it the illusion of that it's legit. It's not so much that people are choosing to believe bad inf- information. It's that a lot of people choosing information that is in line with things that they already know and things that they're comfortable with. So your, that their own biases and your own perspectives. I think that is the most dangerous thing in the news today. And without the experience of a journalist, who's someone who has the time and the ability to do the research, then often you get information out there that, that hasn't, been, hasn't been looked at with the kind of um, scrutiny that it needs. So what I'm hearing you say is that it's really dangerous for kids or adults even to kind of just find one source that backs up their own opinion or what they are believe is true. And that's kind of the most dangerous part of them just sticking with this one first thing that they read. For example, if you think that cows can fly, right, you're going to Google, can cows fly? right? Or are cows flying? And then often the algorithm will show you examples where cows fly. Say cows, there there has been a a video out there somewhere. That's why these things are dangerous because when you search for the things that you think are true, then you're more likely to find those things. And that creates like an echo chamber that's really dangerous. So why is it so important to think critically about the news we read? Well, our news is our window into the world. And when we're, when we're older and we have to vote and make, and make those crucial decisions about our, our lives, about um, where to live, about what job to take, about which politician to vote for, if they, we don't have that news, those facts out there, we don't have those people out there looking at the facts, looking at who has money in our society, then um, we're in danger of losing a lot of the things that we love about our society and those things are like ability to put food on the table ability to live lives that are free from a lot of the hardships that we experience that people see in countries that don't have a a good news environment for example in australia our climate movement is very strong but if we didn't have information out there to show that oh our government isn't doing enough then we wouldn't have those protests and we wouldn't have people out there pushing for more action yeah they say knowledge is power and if you're knowledge is not based on good information, then maybe you're not very powerful after all. Can you give us some examples of fake news, bad news reporting, or news that you shouldn't trust? Like what kind of stuff does that look like? In terms of fake news, often, more often than the time when you're talking about those big news organizations, you're not talking about things that are blatantly untrue. Like they're not going to publish the pigs are flying and the birds have become fish, right? No, they're not going to say that. They're going to say things like, we have, re- Australia is doing so good on climate, we've reduced our emissions by 30%, right? We've cut back on our fossil fuels by 30%. But that's not true because we've all we've done is stop cutting down trees. Organizations that actually break that down for you, right, and give you that perspective, that is what news should be. And people who don't do that, that is what that is the fake news that can be dangerous. And to spot that, it sounds like you have to really either know your stuff or look at the details or confirm it with multiple other sources of news to make sure that people are all saying the same thing to see if you've got your facts in line. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you if you don't, if you're, if you're, you're an ordinary person that you've got to go to school, you've got to have, maybe have a eventually get a part time job and then maybe you're volunteering or you have your extracurriculars, like you're not going to have the time to do that research. And that's why we need journalists who have the perspective, who have the research ability and have the ability to kind of communicate that to you to actually uncover what people in power are doing and how that affects you. So what's the most important thing kids can do when they're trying to decide if news or information is real, true or accurate? The most important thing is, is to look at the detail. And if you don't understand the detail, then finding someone who is experienced in that in that in that field to give you that detail and kind of explain that to you. But more importantly, it's also looking at multiple sources of the news. So if CNN, if Washington Post, if the New York Times, if they're all saying a particular thing, then it's probably true. Like these news organizations have 100 plus staff, many researchers, many people paid to do research to find things out for us. If multiple organizations are saying that, then it is true. And then, and then we can move on. But if there are things that are contentious, if things that have, if, for example, Washington Post says A and CNN says B, right, then those things 
are contentious, but when you're able to look at multiple perspectives, you are able to get your own kind of take on things. Yeah, and then you can kind of decide which one you feel like is really giving you good information, which one is, is like you say, getting the details right and, and looking at the people who might have a motive for not telling the truth and yeah. uh, making sure that they try to see through those tricks that people can yeah. sometimes pull. Yeah, and it, it's important to look at um, who owns a particular news business sometimes as well, because money is always a, a, a factor in things. If people want to find out more about you or the work you do, or they want to follow you on social media, do you have anything that you want to plug for us? Yeah, um, you can follow the uh, Guardian Australia at uh, Guardian Australia on Instagram, or just the Guardian, or just Guardian. Both are great. Uh, Guardian is our international account, and Guardian Australia is our Australian account. Kids out there, you can learn news from a different country, which is really awesome to widen your knowledge. We also have a, a U.S. version of The Guardian, and that's at Guardian U.S. Well, thank you, Burton, for being here and talking with us today. We've really learned a lot about news and what we should look for when we're trying to find credible sources and real news. I've learned that I shouldn't pick the first source that backs up my opinion. I should look for multiple sources, even if that makes me a little bit unhappy, just to find the truth. So thank you for that, and thank you for being here. You're welcome. Yeah. It's, it's great to talk. Thanks so much. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching News Kids Can Use, the show about all the weird, wacky, and straight-up strange stuff that has been making your grown-ups freak out about the news lately. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back in two weeks. I'm Emin Rogers. And I'm Tori Ogawa. And if you have a cool, fun way like wearing kilts and blowing hot air to protest, let us know at our email address, newskidscanuse at krl.org. See you later.